Hi, everybody. I'm Mitch Goddard, uh, principal and co-founding partner of the 77 Group. Welcome to episode number 10. And this week, I'll be uh, walking us through uh, one of the chapters of my book, uh, principal, 77 Principles, Tips, and Takeaways for Exceptional Leaders. Today, we're going to talk about Improvise, Adapt, Overcome. Okay, Mitch, I appreciate that. And I'm Frank Leone, and I'm sort of Mitch's partner uh, today. He's, it's his week. Uh, he does the uh, even weeks. And, uh, but I want to give a couple of very brief announcements uh, here at the beginning. Uh, one is just to remind everybody that each episode reflects a chapter from one of our two books. My book already written, and by the way, I didn't show it in last week's episode, but here's the hardcover copy of it, and uh, it's a pretty one. There's, you see, if you get a Double copy of the book, you can get a picture of Mitch and me. You can't have, what's not the like about that? And, uh, uh, and my book is entitled 77 Ways to Perfect Your Communication Skills, Enhancing Your Personal and Professional Relationships. And it is available by a hardcover, softcover, and soon by an audiobook and by an ebook. Uh, at our website, uh, www. Uh, dot 77 grp.com you should be able to see it on the screen right now mitch is coming out with a companion book uh mm -hmm. sometime uh in the next few months and his is entitled 77 principles tips and takeaways for exceptional leaders and it's going to be very much the same kind of format you know cut right to the point lots of tips easy to apply uh, every day going forward uh, so I wanted to point that out. I want to also point out that we really uh, value uh, your involvement. We value your uh, uh, subscribing. We've had a, a wonderful surge in subscribers uh, to our, our channel, and we greatly appreciate that and uh, very exciting for us. But we also want you to like us uh, in a formal way by hitting like and leave as many comments as possible. And we're both obligated to going through each and every comment and if there's a question to being certain that we respond to it. So I think that's really critical as well. Uh, want to turn it back to, uh, to Mitch to talk about today's topic. Thanks, Frank. Awesome intro. And uh, today, as we dive into improvise, adapt, overcome, uh, I, I kind of think back to uh, uh, a, a, an episode that played out, gosh, I want to say it was 2012. Uh, uh, as I was a healthcare uh, director for a, a large uh, healthcare organization, uh, overseeing many service lines, and we were getting ready to launch our very first uh, multi-service uh, uh, outpatient uh, facility. So we had urgent care, we had uh, primary care, we had laboratory services, imaging, uh, all kinds of basically everything a hospital could offer except for beds upstairs and um, huge project a lot of attention on it I was the point man for it and uh, we had just hired uh, 40 I think we had 41 new employees uh, that were going to be part of the opening staff for this uh, brand new beautiful facility and uh, so we had people trained, we had the, the facility built, ready to go, and uh, the licensing entity, the California Department of Public Health, put us on hold because uh, you know they claimed they had a very busy schedule and, and we were down the list. So it took about four months before we actually had them do the final survey to grant us the license in order to open the doors and start treating patients. So what that brought with us, we had this wonderful game plan in place and we had to take uh, all these 41 people and find something for them to do for four months before we lost them and had to go through the recruiting process, develop people and like that. Uh, so we had to shift, we had, to, we had to, a new challenge, we had to uh, uh, come up with a, a new plan to help us ultimately get to where we wanted to be by putting these people in place and letting them uh, perform their uh, their, their great talents and skills with our patients. So we basically had to reassign them throughout a very large organization. Fairly easy to do, but a lot of logistics uh, and coordination involved in, in placing them and 
spot roles in different departments around the organization. And that's just an example of some of what we're going to be talking here today uh, about being ready to improvise, adapt, form a new plan, and ultimately overcome whatever uh, it is that pops up. So with that, I'll, I'll go into uh, my first tip this week, and that is just like uh, with the uh, uh, CDPH and waiting for licensee, never expect any game plan to play out as written. And uh, as, as illustrated in that, uh, in that story about CDPH, it also reminds me of a time when I was uh, a Baldridge Award Examiner, uh, where we, we do our study of a company and we go out and do anywhere from a two to five day survey uh, with that company to see how worthy they are for consideration for a possible Baldrige uh, Excellence Award. And um, we, uh, this one team that I was on, we got to a place uh, to start our survey and uh, it's like they had no idea we were coming, which was a little odd. So what really should have been a, a two day uh, engagement turned into a, a week long engagement uh, to which we had to make many adapt, uh, adapt uh, to many scenarios, uh, improvise in a lot of way, do a lot of coaching with this company, and ultimately overcome to provide them with a, the feedback, which is uh, the, the main piece that they look for when they go through the Baldridge process. So uh, looking at tip number one, which is never expect any game plan to play out as written, uh, I couldn't agree more. And uh, looking back on my own personal career and life, it's, it's an area where I've fallen short a lot of times when I've stuck with the knitting for too long, when I kept going forward just hoping that things would change in the right direction. Uh, and so I think it's a very, very, very important point of yours that a good leader is one that is nimble enough to change course. That said, though, what my question is, is... Uh, it can also go the, it would seem to me it could also go the other way around, that you could also react too quickly or too often and throw the baby out with the bathwater prematurely. So it would seem to me like so many other things, there's a balance that needs to be struck here between being nimble and changing when change is advisable versus not being too ready to change prematurely. So how do you reconcile that? Well, a, a great question. And I think really once, once you take the time to put the plan together and you start down the road, um, things are going to come up. And uh, among the, the things that you need to consider, whether if it's a slight course change, if it's a drastic course change, or if it's a retreat, let's regroup, rethink this, and, and take a new approach. Uh, Surround yourself with, with, with the good people to help you make a decision. The leader rarely is the smartest guy in the room or the smartest woman in the room. But if they've truly done a good job in their team building, they've surrounded themselves with the subject matter experts, the people that maintain a level of awareness that can offer advice to uh, say, hey, boss, or hey, captain, we need to, we need to either – go this way, stop what we're doing, go back the other way, whatever it is. And um, so we're always in, in evaluation mode. As we set out on any day, any plan, executing any, any, uh, any plan to, to reach a goal, uh, we're always evaluating every step of the way. We're always assessing, we're measuring where we are. And if, we're, if the steps that we've taken so far are going to get us to our ultimate goal. Okay, uh, so uh, tip number two then is always encourage creativity. Absolutely. So always encourage creativity, and there's a number of ways to do this. Uh, what I like to do is uh, just ask questions. Uh, get get in there with with your folks or, or the people that you're leading, and say so. What's another way we could do this? Or, or um, uh, you know, what do you see here? And, and don't be so committed to 
your your plan that that you're the immovable option uh, uh, object. Seek the advice of the people you've been smart enough to put around you, and ask some questions. Also, drill, uh, practice scenarios, and uh, and you know as you go through that, as you prepare for executing your plan, encourage that creativity, that thought amongst your your teammates uh, to say, whoa, this, this isn't going to work. Um, and here, here's a better way. Again, as a leader, you've probably heard this, encourage people to show up with solutions versus just questions um, or demands or anything like that. Uh, and as you engage your people, then you, you make them feel free and safe enough to be as creative as they can be because at some point during the course of that journey to execute that plan, you're going to need to turn around and ask them, hey, what, what do you think? What do we need to do here? So encourage that thinking beforehand. It'll pay off later down the road. Well, Mitch, what do you do with somebody that's too creative? I mean, in, in my career, uh, I had a lot of uh, uh, people that, that, that were always coming up with all sorts of ideas to the point that it was like, whoa, t- t- take it easy. But it was, once again, a sense of balance. In one sense, you want to, uh, you know, you got to turn off that spigot. You can't, you know, you can't embrace every idea they come up with if they have a new idea every day. Uh, yet, on the other hand, you don't want to stifle that creative inclination. So what do you do to strike a balance when it terms to encouraging creativity? Well, I think you start with, with a sincere uh, expression of gratitude for having their head in the game and being willing to put themselves out there with their, with their ideas. Um, and, and if it's an idea that just doesn't fit, then it's your job as the leader. Uh, hopefully beforehand, you've established mission, vision, values. Those are the kind of things that are your guiding principles in anything you do. And, um, and as a leader, if you determine that that idea is doesn't fit with your mission, vision, and values, then it's certainly appropriate to ask that person, again, after thanking them for, uh, for their suggestion or their idea, but then turn around and ask them, okay, but how does that apply to our mission, vision, and values? How does that apply for where we want to end up, and how is that going to get us there uh, in, in a favorable way? Okay, what do you got for tip number three? All right, so uh, kind of corresponding with uh, a, uh, a, a culture of creativity, tip number three says build a culture of what if. So as you're encouraging your, your people uh, to uh, be you know, creative, to keep their head in the game, to always look beyond the obvious, uh, always ask the question, what if? So what if this happens? What if something unforeseen takes place here? How are we going to position ourselves to ultimately adapt, improvise, and overcome what, what we're not planning for? So always keep that, that, that culture of thinking well outside the, the, the core uh, matter to say that what are the other influencers that surround the game plan uh, what if one of those becomes bigger than imagined and starts to offset our game plan? What if these things uh, start happening? Then what are we going to do about it? Okay, I have a tip number four. What do you got? All right, so tip number four, quite simply, remain calm. Uh, things, uh, again, aren't always going to play uh, uh, according to the uh, playbook. And uh, surprises are going to pop up. Uh, surprises kind of have a way to just kind of hang out in, around the corner. And then when you least suspect it, they, aha, look what we've got here for you. Um, I know uh, when, when the military is drilling, and I think back to all the NASA training uh, that went on, every scenario, all the practicing, all the simu- uh, time in the simulator that went on, uh, there were people back in the control room saying, okay, now let's have, uh, you know, an oxygen tank blow on them. Uh, and it's that kind of training uh, and that kind of practice that help people stay calm in the moment. Okay, I know what I'm working with here. How do I uh, continue to move this forward? 
you know, you talk about the word, uh, the word calm, and, and clearly that's very, very important. You don't want somebody that's constantly uh, making people nervous around them. Uh, on the other hand, uh, oftentimes you hear about great leaders of this world that are known for their, their fire, their fiery personality, which is to me the polar opposite of calmness. So how do you reconcile that, Mitch? Well, I think, I think when, when, you, when you stay in that moment and keep your, your eyes focused on the purpose that is in play here, uh, again, sometimes staying calm is very challenging. Uh, but in the end, you've, you've got to be able to stay true to your purpose, uh, trust in the people that you've surrounded yourself with, trust in their talent, the training that, uh, that they've had, the available resources, the culture you've helped develop. And if you, if you keep your eyes on that, it's far more easier to stay calm and, uh, and less likely to explode or become fiery uh, where, you know, fiery leaders, there's a place for them. Uh, and oftentimes they will, that fire in, uh, that they express uh, is the will that gets things done. Uh, but for my money, a cooler head is going to prevail. A calm head that knows what to, um, how to respond to uh, the surprises or the, the unforeseen things pop up, turn into his trusted advisors or her trusted advisors to say, how do we get over this? And then methodically go after it from a new way. Okay, and tip number five. So tip number five, commit yourself and your focus to overall victory, not on the immediate goal. And what I'm saying here uh, is that each game plan, uh, every plan of action, every project, every, every uh, effort to achieve, uh, be it personal or leading a group of people, uh, there usually are, uh, these plans are constructed with steps. Okay, we get here, now we're ready to take the next step. We get here, now we're ready to take the next step. And every one of those little steps is, a, is an immediate goal. We want to get here, achieve this part before we get to the next piece. And what I'm saying with committing to the overall victory or the overall success of the, of the mission or the plan is don't focus so much on, on the little steps necessary because those are likely going to change. Uh, and when, when you are less committed or sold or devoted to those, but are willing to step back, evaluate and say, okay, I still want to get here. So if I need to change this step down here in order to achieve that, then I need to be willing to do that. Again, talk to my trusted advisors, the team around me, get, get the consensus, re reestablish the next step. The next step may be over here now. Okay, that's ultimately going to get us to our goal, and that's the way we're going to, we're going to move forward. Okay, well, great stuff as usual. Mitch, thank you very much. And a couple of concluding remarks from, uh, from my end here. One is that I'll be uh, at bat next week, and my topic is play to your biorhythms, that great communicators know how to uh, uh, play to the ups and downs of their biorhythms. So we're going to talk about that interesting point. Uh, and a reminder again that we want very much for you, number one, to subscribe. Uh, subscriptions are really gone through the roof the last week or two, and uh, we, well, we're thrilled by that, honored, flattered. Uh, number two, like us, we appreciate that, and uh, tells us a lot. And number three is leave your comments and uh, provide your questions. Uh, that, that would be very important as well. And speaking of providing questions, remember we give an award uh, every week uh, for the best question for that previous week. And uh, Mitch, who do you got? You got somebody? I do, actually, from episode six, uh, our friend Dread Pirate Roberts engaged us uh, with a number of comments, and he did come back with a, uh, a very good and salient question saying, what is the most important attribute for a leadership role in your experience and opinion? Uh, so I think there are a lot of attributes, uh, frankly, and I'll call you 
EPR for short, if I, if I can shorten it here. Um, I think there are a number of things that collectively uh, come together to make exceptional leaders, uh, hence 77 chapters worth of uh, principles and tips. Uh, but I think at, at its core, one of the most fundamental characteristics uh, of any exceptional leader that is shared by, by all uh, exceptional leaders is that uh, they have a humble heart. They have a servant's heart uh, putting the good of the team, putting the good of the people they serve by being their leader. Uh, and, you know, by the way, let me sidestep here real quick to say a leader is not the one up, up on top of the hill bumping his chest. A, a good leader, an exceptional leader, is the one who's got a servant's mind and a servant's heart and is humble enough to take that role and uh, serve the people they lead. Uh, it, there's a number of benefits to being humble, uh, practicing humility, and that, number one, it makes you relatable. It makes you likable, and it makes you approachable, which are just huge uh, characteristics for any exceptional leader. So Dread Pirate Roberts, thanks for the awesome question. Make sure you reach out to me at Mitch at 77grp.com. That's my email address. Let me know how to get in touch with you, and we'll set up a 15-minute phone call uh, to discuss anything on, on your mind. Thanks again for your question. Okay, well, thank, as always, thank you, uh, Mitch, th and thank you for the person asking the question, and please keep the questions coming. So we, we like to conclude every episode with a personal thought from each of us, and in the greater context, uh, one of the reasons that we like to include this at the end is that we're, and we've mentioned it before, but we're really doing this because we enjoy doing this. We enjoy giving back to people out there what uh, we've gained in our very fortunate lives. Uh, this isn't about making a lot of money. It's not making about achieving great notoriety. It's not about building a, you know, incredibly large, wonderful company. Uh, it's basically about going out and, and perhaps helping some people. Mm -hmm. And that's why we like to throw out uh, some thoughts about our personal values. So the value I want to share in this episode uh, is to open up to those less fortunate than you. And uh, it goes beyond the usual thinking here. It is being kind when you run into somebody and being understanding and sensitive to what they're going through and realizing that uh, there's an awful lot of people who are held back because of circumstances beyond their control. But to me, it goes beyond that. And it's an ability to learn to, to really integrate with them uh, and, and reap the joy of such integration. And as, as two very small examples is I play a lot of golf and uh, uh, out here in Santa Barbara, there's a lot of wonderful golf courses and those courses are basically maintained by, by people of, uh, his, of, of, <laughs> of Hispanic origin uh, and uh, speak a little English, but not terribly good English and they're out there. And by and large, I've noticed over the years that the golfers pay little attention to them. They could be potted plants for a lot of people. And I've really gone out of my way to learn the names of a lot of these people and to talk with them and to joke around the uh, uh, best I can in Spanish. I have one friend uh, named Pedro, uh, who, uh, uh, you know, the Spanish word for bird is uh, pajaro, and ITO means little. So a birdie in my golfing linguistics is pajarito. And now every time Pedro sees me, he asks me, uh, Quanto pajaritos, and of course the answer is always none, but I try. <laughs> but, but be that as it may, the satisfaction that I get from that, the, 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 the joy and appreciation that I see in the Pedros of this world uh, is priceless. And I also feel that it makes Pedro feel really good as well. Same thing with the gardeners. We have a, you know, gardeners that tend to our home. And I really try to get to know each and every one of them personally and talk to them on a personal level about their lives and not talk to them just about what needs to be done to the flowers and the plants. So uh, it's a win-win. Uh, it's a, a wonderful feeling to be able to connect with those that you might not otherwise be in your universe, but it's also a win for them because uh, they really appreciate the fact that, uh, that you can get down and deal with them as a fellow human being and nothing less. 
Mitch? Amen, Frank. That, uh, that is such a meaningful and, uh, and uh, appropriate uh, way of, of living your life, especially in these times. You know, everybody, we live in a divided world, and, uh, and I think we stand very tall when we, uh, when we uh, give a little bit of time of ourselves in a genuine way to, to whoever it is. Uh, just let them know that they matter, that they're, they mean something, and uh, they're worth your time. So uh, awesome, awesome uh, thought this week, Frank. Uh, for me, um, you know, kind of keeping in theme with today's topic, uh, improvise, adapt, and overcome. Uh, life is full of opportunities to execute your plan, great, uh, but sometimes something comes up that's even more meaningful. Uh, like spending some time with uh, uh, the golf course workers or, or someone that, uh, that a lot of people don't notice to kind of take, take a step away to, to, uh, to recognize them and to uh, be, you know, offer a gentle or kind word. But also as, as you go through life and you have your plan, you know, we all wake up in the morning thinking, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and, and just go right down the list. Life's going to throw you a curveball, so uh, be just just be ready for that, and and be ready with a, a soft and patient heart, uh, because again, uh, we all I think can relate that um, you know not everything's going to go the way we hope it would go, and uh, we just make life tougher on ourselves when uh, when we express too much frustration, get angry, start getting resentful lashing out to the people around us, stay calm, uh, deal with whatever pops up in life, and, uh, and try to keep a little bit of joy in your heart as you go through these things. There's an old saying that says, life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans, and that's so true. We've all lived it. So just stay calm, stay happy. Nothing is uh, really all that catastrophic in most cases. Roll with the punches. You'll be happier and you'll enjoy life a lot more. Okay, well, wonderful job as always, Mitch. And uh, thank you to everybody out there in YouTube land uh, for sharing a half hour with us. And uh, we greatly appreciate it. That's what we're trying to do is to connect with as many people uh, worldwide as we can. Uh, and we'll see you next week. So thank you very much for being with us. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.